collapsible and extendable with a regulator and a fully polished Lothar Walther match grade barrel. Coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&M Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Right, guys the Adamin M2R Ultra Compact X comes to us from Russia and the X is the telescopic stock version of itself the Ultra Compact it's available in 177 22 or 25 it measures 32 to 34 inches long collapsed it measures 22 and a half inches by itself it weighs just 6.4 pounds as you see it here, to include a scope and mounts, it weighs in at 7.4. It's available in this nice black soft touch or walnut. It ships with one 10 shot magazine and two fill probes. It comes with a one year warranty and you can pick one up for around 1200 bucks. Now the M2R is fully regulated. So when you fill its little 130 cc reservoir, to its 4,350 PSI max, you're gonna get 27 to 28 good shots on that regulator before power falls off at around 100 to 105 bar. Now extreme spreads with an 18 grain are gonna be around 12 feet per second and with a 16 grain around 18. Now power comes in at 27 to 28 foot pounds of energy which it accomplishes by pushing an 18 grain to around 837 feet per second or a 16 grain to around 873 with both of those pellets holding on to 22 to 24 foot pounds of energy 25 yards downrange. Now the M2R also takes advantage of a shrouded and polished Lothar Walther match grade barrel, a Weaver Picatinny scope rail, a magazine that's reloadable right in the gun and is also removable, side lever cocking, that telescopic stock, a, colla uh, a uh, collapsible design, an adjustable cheek piece, a rubber butt pad, and a single stage somewhat adjustable trigger with somewhat usable manual safety. So. How does the M2R Ultra Compact X perform? Its 11 inch factory polished Lothar Walther match grade barrel is capable of half inch groups at 50 yards and one inch at 100. But the rest of the gun is gonna make you work for it. Combine that with a collapsible and regulated design that makes quite a bit of power for its size and caliber and you've pretty much got the Ultra Compact X figured out. The rest of the story revolves around a robust and refined build quality, as well as some quirky factory appointed accoutrement. The included 10 shot magazine can be reloaded right in the gun as you see me doing here, or it can be removed and reloaded with seemingly no added benefit for one approach over the other. At first I thought this open design might be advantageous to those wanting to shoot slugs, cause the magazine won't hold on to them, but this gun doesn't like them. As far as I could tell, any of them, but it does do well with pellets. It loves the JSB 18 grain and it kind of likes the JSB 14 grain and the H&N Sport Barracuda 21 grain. But that's about it for 50 yard work. Inside of 25, you'll have quite a bit more to choose from. Before you guys call me out on it, yep, I screwed up again. I forgot to recalibrate the lab radar from 25 to 50, so you're only going to see halfway there, but I got it right on the 100 yard. 110 degrees will do that to a man, as will a paranoia of getting your equipment rained on. It was a really tough week, so let me apologize in advance for some of these scenes being filmed indoors.
Cycling the M2R is quite a bit lighter than most, and feels and sounds quite clean and precise, as does the shot cycle. The magazine's foundation wiggles around quite a bit during the process, but the feed was always slick and smooth, and the movement didn't seem to detract from accuracy, so long as you didn't let the magazine itself fall out of adjustment. For more information on that and on my M2R backstory on discovery and approach leading up to the making of this video, you can visit me on my second YouTube channel, AEAC Vlog. You will get a varying point of impact depending on the adjustability of or how, that, how that spring is pressurizing that ball detent. So I ran an experiment. Like, see, what, what basically happened is I started noticing that every fourth shot in the 10 round magazine would, would throw. And that, that kind of like tipped me off. Well, that's something with alignment with the magazine, right? So this is what I did. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go like this <laughs> with my teaching prop, all right? So you see there's, there's three there and two there, all right? And it, and it slowly worked itself into this over about 500 shots, okay? So then what I did was I, I, I went about um, you know, a half a turn clockwise on that screw, and I noticed things tighten up for the next five. I went another half a turn, and then look how tight it got again. And then I went another half a turn, and then look how tight that one is. So to go from this to this, from just from tightening that, told me that there's a sensitivity that you need to make sure your magazine is properly adjusted to get the accuracy out of the gun. So if it starts getting weird on you, start working that screw in. Now, you don't want to work it all the way in until it seats because then, so it's really an ultra light, kind of ultra compact deal. It's very well balanced, feels super good in the hands, can hold it nice and rock steady. So I, I kind of see this for more like a short field work, maybe to, to break it down and, and um, maybe jam it in your backpack, because again, that's the whole thing right there. Maybe you can put some kind of sling on it, carry around with you for that short work in the field. But um, as far as long distance precision work, I, I, I don't know, only because of this design over here, you've got some movement in here. Okay, and it all comes from this telescopic piece. This is extremely rigid. There's no flex in this like I've seen with other takedown type of uh, PCPs. It's really a solid, solid chunk. By the way, they come in walnut as well if you don't like this soft touch, which is almost like a rubberized coating. It feels like, and this feels like wood. I don't know if it's a wood or a super dense polymer, but it's not hollow. It's a, a good dense stuff. but. But while this is super rigid, when you're on the bag, you get some of this. I don't know how well you can see that. So I was able to get the performance out of it, which I'll share with you here in a few minutes, but it, it took some focus. This piece all up here, the barrel and everything else is extraordinarily true. Like if I do my job, I can put five 2-2 pellets inside of a 2-2 hole. Um, repeatably very easily out to 25 yards. So the engineering is sound. Um, um, we, we hope you enjoy the, the compactness, the new design, the minimal parallax uh, that we put, uh, squeeze everything into this little scope. But at the same time, it's really, really rigid. And um, it, it, together we put a lot of effort from design, uh, machining, engineering, and then assembly and packaging, and we hope that you um, enjoy that. Um, so um, we send you our greetings from Berlin uh, and hope you're all well and enjoy the, the video. Hey Steve and all the EA, EAC fans, greetings from Russia. This is Rustam from Ottoman and uh, the correct pronunciation of uh, our brand name is Ottoman. Yep, so there's more to the story. 
and you'll want to go there to get it. The ottoman shroud does have a little bit of fluting in it, and the barrel does end right about here. But due to its tiny size and the 28 foot-pounds that this thing is putting out, it's really not competitive at keeping sound down, and it's really not that quiet. If silence is a priority, there are aftermarket solutions out there for you, like this Donia Fell Sumo. The Ultra Compact X is one of those guns that really benefited from having an added moderator, and I put in a lot of work to get to that conclusion. I don't know if this is because of the wiggly lower or its shorter stature, but the added weight really settled down the flip and made the X much more enjoyable to shoot from the bags. Big and thick are what it wanted most, and it did a little better with a plus size 25. Every now and then the 22 would clip. Going from 22 to 25, the sound difference was negligible. And when going from 22 to 30, things got pretty raspy. So stay as small as you can get away with. The X is a nimble little gun. It's well balanced and is pleasantly girthy. A standing load up is easy enough, and so is cycling on the fly. But a smaller handle without a drop down can make it tougher to go fast and easier to miss altogether but the overall experience is fun and feels high-end. When inserting the magazine, push at the rear of it for a smoother experience. Putting pressure on the forward half will cause it to bind and will slow you down. Take note of how incredibly steady the muzzle stays for this shot. And remember, there's a few other things going on here with the stock and trigger that both play a role in accuracy. It can be a lot to manage, but one thing's for sure. A larger, heavier moderator makes it all better, and I'll demo this for you out at 100. Refilling the Ultra Compact, Ultra Compact 130cc reservoir goes pretty quickly whether you go from a bottle or a hand pump. Now if you do want to fill from a hand pump and say fill it to just 200 bar of its 300 bar max, you can expect about a dozen good shots on that regulator before power falls off at around 105 or so bar. But no matter what you do, slowly fill to no more than 300 bar. Now to make that happen, use the included quick connect fill probe that ships with the gun and insert it into the end of the air reservoir. Now built into the M2R is a flow restrictor, which does assist in keeping flow rate down or helps the end user from filling it or overfilling it too quickly.
When you're done, bleed the air between your fill source and the gun. Remove the fill probe, and you're done. The Ottoman single stage trigger and manual safety design are an oddity for the US market. While I respect that a lot of competitive shooters appreciate a good single stage, for me, it made things more challenging. And to be able to adjust it down to the eight ounce break weight that I wanted it at, meant that I would no longer be able to utilize the manual safety. It's a simple matter of the design's limitations. That all being said, the trigger itself is actually very nice. It's smooth, light, and predictable, and once adjusted, is free of any goofiness. And this first shot actually had nothing to do with me being able to manage the trigger, and everything to do with a bad pellet. That's just the way it goes sometimes. The MR2 comes out of the box with a long, light, and smooth rolling single stage trigger. And while I know a lot of your fans of the single stage, for a guy that's used to shooting a two stage, I found it really challenging to be precise when shooting for groups out at distances like 50 and 100 yards. And while it broke out of the box at just 11 ounces and in a long rolling predictable place each time, it was really, really tough for me to get used to, especially in a standing position. So I referred to the owner's manual that ships with the gun and spent some time adjusting it more to my liking and came up with this. Eight point three ounces. Optison's new CP three to twelve by thirty two P ultra compact scope is totally badass. At nine and a half inches long and about a pound, it is tiny, and it's big on performance and value. Everything on it behaves like glass in the five hundred dollar price point, except it's three hundred dollars and two thirds the size. It's truly been a long, long time since I've been this excited about a scope. And what's more, it's fully Springer rated, as tested out for a full year with the UK's championship HFT shooting team. In fact, they worked very closely with Optison on the design. In my opinion, it is a grand slam must have. Utah air guns, Southern Precision Air Weapons, and Trainer Outdoors ought to all be getting their very first shipment sometime in September and feel free to tell them I sent ya. I got a feeling they're gonna sell a ton of these things. As always, Optisan's glass is mind-blowing for the price point, and the little 32 has no problem finding light.
Do your part controlling the ultra compact X's lower and its upper will deliver one inch groups at 100 yards all day long. Gusty swirly winds and ultralight pellets notwithstanding of course. Here's my 100 yard 5 shot cider. You can see how a 3-4 mile an hour wind will move them around on you. Two actually went through the exact same hole. Pretty damn impressive for such a little barrel. Well, that's all for today, folks. And special thanks to Ataman, Sports Match Rings UK, Optisan Sport Optics, and Donnie FL for getting this rig into my hands to review for you. You guys know the best way to thank them for that one. Now, from here, you all want to head on over to the Airgun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion thread on the Ataman Scope Mounts and Moderator. I'll leave you links on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great week everyone.